Next thing we're going to do is go to aligning photos. So now we're getting into the workflow of photogrammetry. So we have our photos added. Let's go to align photos here. If you open up accuracy, you see you go from highest to lowest. High should be fine. In fact, all of these settings should be fine. I'm going to hit OK. And this is going to head and detect points within our scenes, compare them with each other, and then give us representations of where our cameras are in space relative to the object. Now there was a grayed out option which was constrain features by mask. We couldn't check that on because we don't have any masks to constrain it to, but eventually, later on we'll show you how that's going to work. Uh, basically you're going to want to turn that on if you have masks in your objects so that it'll use the background to align your cameras but then ignore it for the point cloud data. Alrighty, so you're going to see a bunch of green checkbox show up. If you have any objects that don't have green checkboxes, there are ways to manually plot points and go ahead and, again, align your cameras manually. This seemed to work out fine. And again, we're keeping this simple, so we're not going to go too deep into that. If you want to see your cameras, you're going to see we're in the image tab right here. Go to the model tab. And if you zoom out, you're going to see a bunch of points here. This is your, if you hover over this icon here, this is your point cloud. Next to that is your dense point cloud. We don't have that created yet, that's why it's grayed out. So we have our point cloud here. If you want to see your cameras, click on this little camera icon, and we zoom in, you're going to see here's all of my cameras going around my object here. And navigation in this view is basically clicking on this ball back here and moving it around. And you're going to see we're in navigation mode because we have this button right here uh, selected. If you have any of these other ones selected, you're not going to be navigating. But as long as this one's selected, we're able to navigate. Now, if you want to put this ball in the middle of our object, which I think we do, I'm going to middle mouse drag and just move my object into the middle of that ball. Now we're not actually moving our object. You can do that up here. You're going to see you can rotate your object in space, uh, but really we're just using navigation and our middle mouse button to get our ball uh, right on our object here. Now you're going to see in our cameras, we have a red one over there. It's like, oh, is that a camera that has an error on it? No, that's just the camera we have selected over here. So if you select multiple cameras, you're going to see those are all going to turn pink or reddish in our viewport here. So really nothing to worry about. If you deselect all your cameras, uh, they'll all just turn blue. If you don't want to see your cameras, just go ahead and turn them off. But basically, uh, this is where I was standing. You can see my garage back here. You can see my driveway here. I've got her stacked on boxes. And I took some photos up here that went around her top. And then I took some photos down around the bottom. Then I took some photos um, just kind of looking at her. Not necessarily eye view level. I guess a little down. I guess I probably should have gone a little bit lower. But that's okay. I think we'll get a decent result. So I guess we don't need to see our cameras anymore at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my cameras off. Now, the reason why masking would have helped with our point cloud data is because when it generated this sparse point cloud, so you can see all these little sparse uh, points sitting out here, um, if we would have had masked around our object, it would have ignored all of this stuff here. So it took in like my neighbor's house and my garage and all this stuff. Not a big deal to get rid of these points. Basically, what I'm going to do is... Luckily, she's sitting on a bright yellow box. Now, again, you don't want to capture with a bright yellow box here because that's going to give us... Uh, bounce light, but what I can do is I can use that to kind of tell where my object is so I can go ahead and delete some of these points manually. I'm going to go from navigation, I'm going to click this down arrow, and we're going to go to freeform selection, and I'm just going to start selecting um, some of these points here. So some of these really far outlying points I know I can go ahead and get rid of, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab all of these points here and hit delete, and then I can zoom in a little bit and see there, there she is sitting on her box. So really, I can go ahead and select all this stuff here. Oops. Let's go ahead and try that again. There we go. So we can get rid of all those extraneous points. That's that's this data we don't need. It's just going to get in the way. And I can reposition my ball here. So we've got our ball reposition here. And even here, I can go ahead and get rid of this driveway bit here. So we don't need any of that. And we'll delete that. We'll zoom back in on our girl. And we can go ahead and while we're in navigation mode, I got a little flying point right here. Oh, one thing I should have mentioned is you can also m get rid of some of those points. Let's go ahead and quickly, let's undo some of our points here. So we've deleted a bunch of points. We still have some floating points in here. I've deleted twice. So one thing we can do is we can go into tools, optimize cameras, hit OK. Actually, you know what? Let's go to Tools, Optimize Cameras. Let's turn on all these boxes here. We'll hit OK. And now if we go to Edit, Gradual Selection, you're going to see we have a bunch of options in here we can choose. So if we do Reprojection Error, and you start dragging that to the right, you're going to see a bunch of these points start turning uh, pink. You can use some of these to get rid of stray points that Photoscan is saying could be a reprojection error. You can go down here to Reconstruction Uncertainty and start dragging those in. It's going to start deleting those because it's not really certain about those points. So you can 
determine a nice threshold. If you go here to projection accuracy, you see as you start dragging that up, it's going to start uh, labeling some of those. But like we already did, you can just go through here. And just manually get rid of some of these points here. And again, I'm just hitting the delete key. And then we'll go back into navigation. We'll go ahead and center her with our middle mouse button right back on the ball. And then we can zoom right in on her. If you want to, you can go to this top view here. And we can go ahead and get rid of some of this box. There we go. Not too shabby for a sparse point cloud. 